media broadcast to provide county citizens an opportunity to watch and review our scheduled public sessions. To comply with the governor's proclamation declaring a state of emergency in Maryland to minimize the person-to-person -person spread of COVID-19, we are providing remote options for citizens to watch and participate with county commissioner meetings. Citizens may watch our meetings live on our QAC website at www.qac.live or on QAC TV's television channel, Atlantic Broadband Channel 7 and High Definition Channel 507. Citizens may also participate by joining the live Zoom meeting by going to www.qac.org slash public comment. And citizens may also email comments to public comment at qac.org. We will accept comments till the end of the meeting and they will be read aloud during press and public comments. To maintain, to maintain public health protocols, seating will be limited to accommodate social distancing guidelines. If you have respiratory symptoms such as fever, cough, or shortness of breath, please refrain from attending the meeting and notify a health care provider. Press and public comment will be taken and is limited to three minutes. If you care to speak, you must sign the sheet on the information table here. Comments longer may be submitted in writing for the commissioner's review. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Commission President Chris Corcorino. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome everybody. We are here for the third and final uh, presentation of the Queen Anne's County Commissioner's proposed fiscal 22 budget. And uh, I believe the commissioners are gonna come down in the front so they can watch this again. So while they're um, getting situated, I will notice or note here that we have on the, on the title slide a link to the uh, web page on our county website that has all of the budgetary information for everyone's review that anyone that wants to dive a little bit deeper into our overall fiscal 22 proposal. So everything is there. What I'm gonna give you tonight is a broad overview and highlight of the fiscal 22 budget for your uh, information tonight and we will receive uh, public comments as well. Okay, so um, generally our objective always is, is to to demonstrate our sound financial management and to provide responsible services to our citizens. Uh, we uh, prepared this budget to reflect recommendations from our Spending Affordability Committee, which includes compliance with policies on debt management, maintenance of our uh, rainy day fund and fund reserves, using our fund balance and PAYGO funds to reduce proposed capital debt. For example, we are reducing our uh, bond sale this this next year from 7.7 .7, down to 7.7 .7 million from 14 million which was projected last year and um, we've also developed a sustainable funding plan to address uh, the results of the Kerwin Commission going forward for Board of Education and our budget is also consistent with our AAA bond rating we are extremely proud that we have AAA bond rating that's uh, something we've we've carried now for about nine years it demonstrates uh, our strength across major credit factors our strong economy here in Queen Anne's County, our large available reserves, and our affordable debt burden. So again, we're very proud of this continuing achievement for, uh, for our citizens in Queen Anne's County. So the budget highlights for fiscal 22, number one, front and center, property tax rate will remain the same. No increase in taxes. We are at 0.8471 per $100 of assessed value. And this will be the 11th year uh, we've held that same rate. Income tax rate is also remaining the same at 3.2%. We have uh, budgeted growth at 7.3% from this current fiscal year. So we're going from about 143.8 million in operations to 154.4 million in fiscal 22. Income tax and property tax makes up 86.3% uh, of our total revenue sources. That's the lion's share of our revenue stream. Uh, income tax is going up by about 17% from 21, and property tax increases by 2.6% uh, from 21. This slide is, shows how we stack up in, across the state of Maryland against all of our uh, counties in the state and Baltimore City. You can see we're uh, highlighted there in the yellow bar. We are the fourth lowest uh, property tax rate in the state of Maryland. Some budget highlights uh, for 22, uh, leading off with Board of Education. We funded uh, the Board of Education and Operations at $1.3 million above the maintenance of effort. 
and that is despite declining enrollment, we wanted to make sure we were eligible for uh, additional state funding of $3.1 million by holding that uh, harmless going forward this year. Our budget includes funding for new employee recruitment and uh, retention actions. We are including an, an employee staff compensation package, 2% cost of living and pay for performance. We added uh, 20 additional positions across eight county departments, ranging from entry level to positions to ensure, leadership positions to ensure continuity of government operations. We've increased uh, allocations to the volunteer fire companies by 5%. We've increased public libraries by 4.1%. We are shifting a million dollars from capital to operations as, a, as an enhancement for vehicle replacements across all county departments, and that's another way to we reduce our debt load. Our budget also includes, as an enhancement, funding for body-worn cameras uh, for the sheriff's office. This next slide shows a pictorial pie chart uh, of our proposed revenue uh, by source, just to give you a visual perspective of how we stack up in the revenue streams. Income tax, obviously, uh, in the blue at 40 percent. Property taxes at 47 percent make up the lion's share. We have a number of uh, other local taxes that uh, add up to about 9 percent. The next slide shows all of those revenue streams numerically. Uh, so across the top of that spreadsheet, we have uh, the FY20 actuals, the 21 budget, um, and the 22 proposed budget, and the change from 21 to 22. And you see income tax and property tax at the top uh, leading off, and then some of the other taxes that we collect, uh, public utility taxes, hotel taxes, uh, recordation taxes, franchise fees, to name a few. So giving us the uh, 154.4 million for fiscal 22. This chart shows the revenue side of the equation. This shows you where all the money goes and where it's allocated uh, visually. Again, the blue segment uh, sector there is education, 40%. Uh, that's the line share of where the money goes. They are allocated at 61.03 million, followed by public safety, which is about 11% of the overall budget. That's uh, emergency services on our detention center and public works uh, at 8%. And we have another of other agencies that make up about 15 percent of the overall uh, budget, and that includes our sheriff's office, uh, state's attorney, health department, social services, and a number of others. So we can detail those on these, oops, next series of slides. And I'm not going to go through all these uh, uh, individually, but I just wanted everyone to have this for reference. So you can see th this is all the different county agencies uh, by department. Uh, grouping and shows the actual dollar amount that they receive as uh, uh, for the budget for fiscal 22. Also provides some uh, comparisons in the fiscal 20 and 21 uh, numbers as well to give you some uh, perspective there. The first group is the county administration group, which includes budget finance, human resources, economic development, community services, uh, area on aging, our housing community services group as follows them, planning and zoning, uh, public safety, we mentioned them earlier. Public Works is on the next slide with Parks and Recreation. You can see they have a number of subgroups within those two larger departments. Parks and Rec does have a couple of uh, enterprise accounts, uh, airport and uh, golf course listed there. Uh, here we have uh, the Board of Education. They come in again at 40 percent, and that's the, uh, the proposed at 61.03 million. And we have a number uh, of other outside agencies that I mentioned earlier as well that list out here, and they uh, comprise about $24 million of the overall budget, which is about 15 percent. So there's a number of those, including Chesapeake College, the libraries, Board of Elections, and, and the others listed there. We also have uh, uh, two debt accounts, debt service accounts uh, broken down by Board of Education and General County Government for uh, larger capital projects for schools and projects like the uh, new courthouse. And then we have other expenses listed here, including insurances, uh, grants, uh, post-employee benefits, and uh, other expenses that we have totaling about uh, $10 million of our budget. All right, the next group of slides, and I'm not going to go through these in a lot of detail either. They're here for your reference. This is our proposed uh, fiscal 22 budget enhancements, also by department. Uh, the green boxes do show uh, the vehicles that are 
moving from capital over to the operations side because they will go over into the into the department's operating budgets. The um, the tan boxes show position uh, enhancements, and just to give you an example of that, uh, the bottom we have a number of positions in emergency services. We're converting from part time to full time EMTs and paramedics, so they're included as enhancements in terms of uh, position enhancements. And then the blue the blue boxes are other operating enhancements for things like supplies and materials and uh, services that we have. And these are all broken down by, uh, by department. Here we have on this group, we have, uh, for example, fire protection. They have a number of uh, supplies and services, including monitoring costs, testing of hoses and ladders that we've added, their allocation, uh, for example. They're all shown in the blue boxes there. And the next slide shows, um, I wanted to highlight here our roads division. We are adding some positions there for highway maintenance workers. And uh, at the top of that chart there, we are looking to create a new information and communications uh, technology department, and that includes a new uh, director position, a leadership role position there as an enhancement for next year. Oops. Uh, the last one here includes uh, the sheriff, and I mentioned earlier the body-worn cameras, and that's listed there in his grouping. Uh, for an enhancement, and uh, we have a total of $3.2 million in enhancements for fiscal 22, shown at the bottom right. And my, here we go. All right, so moving into capital, capital budget highlights. We have uh, a $32.2 million capital budget uh, proposed for fiscal 22. Again, leading off with Board of Education, we have $6.5 million planned for them. Funding for the Central Office Replacement, the Board of Education Administration Building down on uh, Chesterfield Avenue. The Kennard Elementary School Roof Replacement, various building assessment projects, health suite expansion, the technology plan, security measures, uh, transportation upgrades, uh, new furniture, and playground replacements. The Ken Allen Library is funded at $1.7 million. This is a multi-year project. This is the final year for the library. Uh, that should be finishing up about this time next year. The Parks and Recreation, we have them at $2.6 million, which includes a new ranger station down at Terrapin Nature Preserve, uh, which includes a bathroom, athletic field lighting at Old Love Point Park, playground equipment at Route 18 Park, and, uh, and uh, that concludes parks. We have uh, 600, actually 625,000 for volunteer fire companies uh, this year. Half a million dollars for the YMCA, another multi-year project, and they, they do plan to break ground this summer. We have uh, $500,000 for uh, continuing public safety dispatch upgrades at our emergency services department, and I think that's the final year for that project. Detention center renovation and expansion at $4.3 million. Uh, that is largely grant from the state, and uh, that is a multi-year project as well that is going to begin in fiscal 23 at this point in time. And the last two are um, grant and enterprise funds. We have a public sewer extension plan from Sellersville to Barclay at uh, $4.9 million, and that is a grant. And the South Kent Island Sanitary uh, Project phases two and three at $3.3 million, and that is a water quality loan. And again, there's, they're not general fund projects, but they are included in our capital planning uh, budget. The funding sources that go with all these capital projects include um, general fund PAYGO transfers, uh, 2.1 million. We have grants at 10.3 million, a bond sale of 7.7 .7 million, as I mentioned earlier, operating funds at $600,000, capital fund balance at 4 million, and other funding sources, which include uh, uh, program open space money, USDA grants, and in the case of sewer projects, water quality loans, again, for sewer projects, et cetera. So that includes uh, up to $7.4 million for those uh, special uh, revenue streams. And the rest, the next two series of slides are really referenced, but this, this shows the fiscal 22 capital budget by funding source. Again, the funding sources I just mentioned are across the top of the page, and then all the projects are listed on the, on the side, um, down the page, and it just shows you each project and the money that comes out of each of those various pots. And some have one source, some have multiple sources. A lot of our grants do require matching funds. So you'll see, you'll see some matching funds potentially in PAYGO or bonds for some of the bigger projects. So 
I wasn't going to go through all of these, but I did highlight the, uh, the, major, the major ones that we have coming up next year. We have a lot of smaller projects, too, that are proposed in the capital budget that continue each year. But these are all broken down, you know, by department, um, as I mentioned earlier. Am I? There we go. Um, so those are, those are all of those. Uh, this last slide, um, it lists primarily all of the enterprise accounts, uh, public landings and the sewer accounts, so that it kind of worked out that way. So those are the, the enterprise accounts, uh, not so much the general fund accounts, but we do plan for those in our capital budget. And uh, the next group is our six-year capital budget. And this is our blueprint for the future. Uh, it's, um, it's subject to change. Obviously, the fiscal 22 um, group is, uh, is funded, so that's the first column. And then we have five planning years behind that, and that gives us a perspective of where we need to plan budgetarily for the future. And those numbers and those projects change and shift around. They can move from year to year. But it gives us a, a tool and a mechanism to plan for the bigger projects so we can manage our, our bond and our debt service loads uh, so they're manageable for us going forward. So there are a number of slides here that um, that demonstrate all of the projects. So there's a, n a lot more on this list than the previous list because it, it, it includes all six years. So that's there for uh, for everyone's reference. And I think if I can get this to, there we go. So that concludes uh, really the budget. Upcoming dates, uh, we're here. As I said, this is our third and final budget uh, hearing at Sellersville. We have a final work session with our county commissioners a week from uh, yesterday on May the 18th to make any final adjustments based on uh, their, their review and, and the comments we receive. And then we plan to adopt the budget on May the 25th at 7 p.m. and that's a regular county commissioner meeting. So that is the overview of our fiscal 22 budget and I think we can begin our public comment period. So has anybody signed up? I think we, uh, we would like you to state your name and where you live, but I think we know pretty much everybody that's here tonight, which is very nice, very good. Let's commissioners get their seats up here. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Billy Faust. Good evening, Commissioners and uh, County Administrator. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Ms. Hefner for the job she got. I uh, appreciate that. I've worked well with her in the past. Um, I want to thank you all for this past year. Uh, you asked us last year to come in flat, and we did. And then because of COVID, you all helped us out with different funding and uh, saw the needs. Um, I, I want to thank you all for that. And I also want to let the public know just exactly what you guys did. Number one, we got hit with this, and we had problems getting material, PPE for our 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 frontline people, the county, Department of Emergency Services, Sheriff's Department, all you guys stepped up. We all worked together. We all made a, we had a bank of equipment and supplies that we needed. So we came close, but I don't think we ever really run out. I know we stopped with a few things where we were close. Um, it got to where we were handing out uh, gowns to like two at a time because we just didn't have them. But as far as masks and and gloves and all I got, I don't think we ran out, which was a great thing. Um, but you all guys, because when this hit, it shut down all of our fundraising abilities. It shut our firehouses down. It shut, it shut everything down that we had to work for and work with, but we still had to provide that service. And I want to thank you again for you guys stepping up and realizing we had that issue and coming forth and helping us with our loss of revenue. Um, it was a, a trying time for all of us. Um, we had more duty crews staying at the firehouse. It was weird because when you came to the firehouse to jump on the fire truck, you jumped on. And then when you come back, you got your temperature taken and all like that. <laughs> just, but it was too late then, but 
we had to do that. And uh, there wasn't no standing around the firehouse after you got back and talking. You left. Um, when duty crews come on, they all had to be tested. When we got the last hour of duty crew, you had to go around and wipe everything down before you left the firehouse and go. So you all understand what we went through, and we appreciate it. And I just want the community to know that with with all that's happened, you guys had our backs, and we had the people's back. We were there for them. Um, I want to thank the Sheriff's Department, Department of Emergency Services, but you guys especially, because without you guys, we couldn't have done what we did. And it seems like things are starting to ease up. I hear that some of, like, we're getting ready to start having stuff starting June 1st. We're going back to having our bingos. We got a few things going on this, this month. Um, so, again, thank you, commissioners, and uh, keep up the good work. Miss Tammy Harper. For the record, Tammy Harper, 908 Kentmore Road, Stevensville, Maryland, and representative of the, well, I represent me. Good evening. I appreciate this opportunity to speak. I hope that you gentlemen had a chance to read my email that was sent this afternoon to all of you. In the email, I did not give you an accurate account of the number of teachers in the classrooms versus the number of teachers that were teaching virtually. I can verify this with human resources if you would like to have those numbers. What is accurate is the need for funding to finalize the unit negotiations for this next coming school year. All of the open meetings and work sessions for the Board of Education have been seen on QAC TV. The members and staff have talked extensively about the level of funding that is needed for the 2021-2022 school year. I'd like to remind the commissioners that the Board of Education is the only department in the county that has a 30% rate of return on investment, even though the level of investment has been reduced over the several years. In 2014, the Board of Education was 51% of the budget. With Chesapeake College, it was 53%. And the only reason why I remember this is because the commissioners at that time sent out a dollar bill that had a gar bar graph on it and showed 53% education. It was kind of a cute thing they did. In the current proposed budget, education is only 40%. This coming year, like last year, the Board of Ed will have to have a reduction in force of key teaching positions to balance the budget. And I believe you all heard this last night from Dr. Kane, that 19 positions were reduced last year, two years before that, nine positions, with the possibility of 29 positions for this coming school year. The commissioners are proposing a 2% salary increase incentive to hire and retain county staff, while in the meantime, we'll be losing teachers and educational staff to other counties that pay more money. Please help us to retain great teachers and staff for our, pu our public schools. Thank you. Okay, that's all we had signed up. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak tonight? Do we have anybody on Zoom or any comments that were emailed in? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, I guess that concludes our public comment for this evening. I'll turn it back over to the commissioners if they want to make any closing remarks. Uh, I'm not on yet. Ah, here we go. Thanks, guys. So, um, talking about power to the microphone, I want to take this opportunity to, to thank our QAC Channel 7 crew for all the hard work over the last three, three days to um, um, put this uh, project together and make it accessible to our county citizens. So, that's probably a total of about 15 hours in these last three days, start to finish for this project. So, to QAC Channel 7 and their crew, guys, thank you very much for that. Good job. Um, to support our volunteer firehouses um, is really a, a no-brainer. I mean, if we went to a paid fire service in this county, um, well, let's just put it this way, it would be so expensive, we'd have to raise taxes to a ridiculous amount. So we thank our volunteer fire services for what they do and the money they save our taxpayers and the great service that they give our citizens. So um, thank you, Billy, for the accolades. We appreciate it. Please pass that on to the uh, other members of the FTC and the volunteer firehouses in our county for all their great work and patience with us through the tough times. Um, yeah, I just want to echo what uh, Commissioner Duminell said about our firefighters. Uh, they were there when this started along with our other emergency services, um, stepped up to the plate, never complained, didn't want to stay home. They got out and they served the public through it. And I, I, I agree with him, it was a no-brainer to uh, make them whole this year because 
again, if, if they can't open those firehouse doors, that puts this whole county in jeopardy um, and every citizen in here. And sometimes, you know, they're going to be out fundraising again starting up here not too long. And, and I'll give you the props, Billy, I gave it last night. Sellersville is having their beef and brew coming up. Um, but get out and support them. Make it so that they can get back and, and do uh, some of the things in the community. I know they enjoy doing that stuff. So as soon as they get back to doing it, please come out and support them um, from north to south. They all need it. Um, as far as the education funding, I'm not going to – we'll have a further conversation on that, obviously, next week and over the coming weeks. Um, but it is, it's a long-term um, issue, and it's one that I've spoke on for the last three years uh, as somebody who sat on the Kerwin Commission and, and actually said that this may not be beneficial for Queen Anne's County, and it, it may take Queen Anne's County in, in a direction they don't want to go in. And I spoke to those that would listen, and sadly, some parts of it have come to fruition here in the first year of its implementation. And it's, it's a staunch reality, and it's something that we're going to have to deal with and I think uh, this commission, I know Commissioner uh, Corcorino and Commissioner Dumino have worked with the board um, and myself and Commissioner Moran prior to that to sit down and try and solve some of these problems. But, uh, you know, our, our door's open to the board and, and the superintendent, so um, I don't think it's something that's insolvable, but it's, it's a lot of money and, we, you know, we've got to figure out what's best for the citizens, the taxpayers, and our kids, because our kids are, you know, they're one of our biggest investments here in the county. So I look forward to it. Thank you. I think this year's uh, meetings have been made noteworthy by the lack of public involvement, which I think it's my prayer and that of the other commissioners reflects the fact that the public believes that the direction we're in is the right direction and that uh, the reason they're not here is they're not asking us to change it. So with that, I will hand the microphone to my uh, superior speakers. The only thing I'm going to say is if you haven't had your shot, get your shot and get anybody you know to get their shot. That's it. Well, I guess I have nothing to add to all of that. The brilliance from everybody else. Uh, Tina, motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we're adjourned.